Hello everybody, I am Dr. Sneha and today we are going to discuss about odontogenesis. Now in the earlier video we discussed about embryogenesis in detail and today we are going to pick it up from there and talk about tooth development in proper. Now I highly recommend you to go back and watch that earlier video for better overall understanding. The link of it will be given in the description box below. So without wasting much time, I welcome you all to the Perio Hub and let's get started. Odontogenesis or the development of tooth structure. So in the earlier video, we discussed about the process of embryogenesis and we saw the uh, development and formation of stomodium, which is the primitive mouth. Uh, let's quickly recap this. So this is the stomodium and it is uh, superiorly uh, lined by the uh, frontonasal process. On lateral aspect, we see the maxillary process and inferiorly it is lined by the mandibular process. And uh, if we uh, see microscopic view of the stomodium, then it is made up of certain layers. So uh, this is a cross section uh, and here we see it is made up of primarily three layers. So outermost layer is the oral epithelium or a layer of ectodermal cells. This is the oropharyngeal membrane or the buccopharyngeal membrane underlining which we have a layer of ectomesenchyme. So this is around at the 6th week of intrauterine life, we can see a well defined oral epithelium and the buccopharyngeal membrane. Now within the next few days, the buccopharyngeal membrane would rupture. So this is the rupture of the buccopharyngeal membrane and this rupture further facilitates the cells of the oral epithelium to migrate within the ectomesenchyme. So here we can see that uh, these cells are getting uh, uh, migrated and differentiated into the ectomesenchyme. Now, around the seventh week of intrauterine life, uh, certain areas of the oral epithelium, the cells will proliferate more rapidly as compared to the other areas and it forms a primary epithelial band. So this is the formation of the primary epithelial band. Now by the end of the uh, seventh week of intrauterine life, the primary epithelial band will divide into two portions. So we have the outer or the buccal uh, vestibular lamina and we have the inner or the lingual lamina. Now if we just uh, go ahead in time and see what happens to the uh, dental lamina or the lingual lamina is this degenerates and uh, the cells which are remnant are called as the cell rests of cerasis. So with this we start off with the stages of development. We have the bud stage, we have the cap stage, we have the bell stage and bell stage can be further divided into early bell stage and advanced bell stage. So first let's have a look at the bud stage. So we saw the uh, oral epithelium, we saw this which is the vestibular lamina and now this dental lamina will further differentiate and give rise to a ovoid or a round uh, swelling and this is called as the primordia of enamel organ. Now uh, in the bud stage the cells in the enamel organ are not very well differentiated so it contains a layer of cuboidal cells which surround the enamel organ and in between like in the center of the enamel organ the cells are basically polygonal in shape. Now just uh, beneath the enamel organ we have the condensation of the neural crest cells which takes place which forms the dental papilla and just beneath the dental papilla further condensation of the ectomesenchymal cells takes place to form the dental sac. So here uh, in the bud stage we can clearly appreciate enamel organ, the dental papilla and the dental sac formation. Now basically uh, the enamel organ will give rise to the future enamel, the dental papilla will give rise to dentin and pulp that is D and P so dentin for dental and P for pulp and ultimately the dental sac will give rise to the other remaining structures of the teeth which include the cementum and the PDL or the periodontal ligament. With this we come to an end of the bud stage and enter into the next stage of development of a tooth which is the cap stage. 
so uh, this is a cap stage uh, because of the uh, unequal proliferation of the cells taking place in the enamel organ the bud does not give rise to a uniform uh, ovoid swelling but rather it gives rise to a cap like structure and that's the reason it's called as the cap stage so here we see a peripheral layer of cuboidal cells and this is called as the outer enamel epithelium so this layer of cuboidal cells is called as the outer enamel epithelium whereas the cells which are present in the concavity of the cap is called as the inner enamel epithelium now outer enamel epithelium is separated from the dental sac so this is the dental sac and it is separated from the dental sac by the basement membrane whereas the inner enamel epithelium is separated from the dental papilla by the basement membrane now in in the cap stage the dental papilla will proliferate and it gives rise to small capillaries and uh, mitotic figures and these help in the formation of the future pulp and the dentine now interposed between the outer enamel epithelium and the inner enamel epithelium we see a polygonal layer of cells and this is the stellate reticulum now stellate reticulum is a layer that acts as a shock absorbent and protects the delicately forming enamel cells now one more important structure that we talk about over here is the enamel knot so enamel knot is a centrally a uh, placed uh, structure within the enamel organ so it is basically a densely packed unit and it helps uh, as a reservoir for the dividing cells it also acts as a signaling center for expression of growth factors to determine the shape of the uh, tooth itself so incisors uh, look different and molars are in a different shape so this is caused by the signaling molecules which are released by the enamel knot so with this we come to an end of the uh, cap stage and we move on to the next stage which is the bell stage so here we'll first talk about the early bell stage and then progress to the advanced bell stage so in the early bell stage uh, we we see a well defined oral epithelium and the second aspect that we have to concentrate here is the is the inner enamel epithelial cells which are present towards the concavity of the enamel organ differentiate and form the ameloblasts so ameloblasts are the precursor cells for the enamel formation so this happens at the early bell stage the stellate reticulum also undergoes differentiation and the cells which are just near the ameloblast differentiate and form a layer of squamous cells and this is now called as stratum intermedium so stratum intermedium along with the outer enamel epithelial cells together provide nutrition to the avascular enamel that is being formed by the ameloblastic cells now one more important uh, step that happens in the early bell stage is the certain cells of the dental papilla will undergo differentiation and form a layer of odontoblasts so the this is the layer of odontoblast we need to uh, make sure that we understand that the odontoblast that is the formation of dentine takes place first following which the enamel formation occurs so ultimately uh, the dental sac uh, is also getting uh, condensed and uh, the, there is circular arrangement of the cells which takes place for the developing periodontal ligament and the cementum so in uh, uh, in the early bell stage we saw the differentiation and formation of ameloblasts the odontoblast the formation of stratum intermedium and the uh, uh, condensation of the dental sac coming on to the advanced bell stage so this is a diagrammatic view of the advanced bell stage and as you can see here the stratum intermedium is kind of thinned out so it has done its work of providing the nutrition and so the degeneration of the stratum intermedium is taking place 
so the odontoblastic cells have started forming the dentin first and mineralization of dentin starts happening after a layer of dentin is formed the ameloblast starts depositing a layer of enamel so a coronal layer of enamel is being formed uh, even the cells of the dental papilla will arrange itself and cause the formation of the dental pulp now one more very important thing that happens in this uh, uh, step is the union of the inner and the outer enamel epithelium will give rise to a loop called as the cervical loop now cervical loop holds prime importance for root formation so let's have a zoom in look at the cervical loop so let's zoom in this portion so if we zoom in this portion we see a, a layer of outer enamel epithelium we see a layer of inner enamel epithelium uh, and this is the uh, coronal enamel and the dentin being deposited by the odontoblast so the union between the outer and the inner enamel epithelium there is the formation of a root sheet and this is called as the hertwig's epithelial root sheet so the inner and the outer enamel epithelium together form the hertwig's epithelial root sheet which is uh, uh, which helps in root formation so what exactly happens is uh, as the uh, radicular dentin is being deposited by the odontoblastic layer the hertwig's epithelial root sheet ruptures so here as we see there is a rupture of the hertwig's epithelial root sheet and the cells of the dental sac so this is the dental sac so the cells of the dental sac come in contact with the uh, de, uh with the dentin and they form the cementoblastic cells so they differentiate and they form cementoblastic cells for the formation of the cementum so to basically summarize what we have seen till now so we have seen uh, the primitive mouth or the stomodium and if we see the cross section view of the stomodium we have the outer layer of oral epithelium and the ectomesenchyme there is thickening of the epithelium that takes place to form a bud and this is called as the enamel organ condensation uh, of the ectomesenchyme to form the dental papilla and dental sac then we enter into the cap stage where the inner and the outer enamel epithelial cells are formed and uh, the dental papilla and dental sac will condense further uh, this cap stage then enters the bell stage wherein the formation of enamel and formation of dentin is seen a formation of cervical loop uh, causes the uh, 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 starts the development of the root and ultimately the root development takes place uh, as the root development takes place the tooth erupts into the oral cavity now there are many theories active and passive theories of eruption of the tooth and uh, the tooth ultimately erupts and reaches the occlusal plane now this process as we saw is a highly complex process uh, there is a lot of uh, correlation of different cells um, which degenerate and form so this is basically controlled by a group of genes and uh, this genes is called as the homeobox genes so these genes help in the expression of various proteins which bring about these uh, changes the major proteins that uh, uh, that uh, that uh, are responsible for tooth formation is the bone morphogenic proteins the fibroblast growth factors the tumor necrotic factors and the sgg uh, which is basically the sonic hedge hedge hog proteins so these are the proteins and the gene factors which are responsible for the tooth development with this we come to an end of this two series broadcast on embryogenesis and odontogenesis i hope these videos were helpful and useful please leave your suggestions in the comment section below like and subscribe to this channel i also take this opportunity to wish you all a happy diwali have a safe diwali and enjoy yourself and this is perio hub Signing off.